Hello, this is Scotty McCoy. I am the author of the Ultimate Friday the 13th Trivia Book, and I am doing another book titled The Ultimate Slasher Movie Encyclopedia, and I am inter and I am interviewing the cast and crew of the Friday the 13th franchise. And I currently have on the phone Julie Michaels, who played Agent Elizabeth Marcus in Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday. Hi, Julie. How you doing? I'm great this morning. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, Friday the 13th Marathon on Stars, so can't get better than that on a Saturday. <laughs> 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 so I have a couple you questions. Done it last night. I know, right? It was a Friday last night, so it should have been on. But I'm kind of glad it wasn't because I had work. So, <laughs> oh, perfect. So it works out. <laughs> so I have a couple questions for you. I have about ten of them that I'm going to ask. Uh, the first one I have is, how did you get your start as an actress and a stunt woman? Uh, that's a really interesting story. I was in college. I was a gymnast at the University of Washington, and um. I uh, got hurt and lost uh, funding from my education, so I was looking for a way to pay for school. And there was a sign up on one of the walls of one of the dorms that said, the Miss America program, uh, they give $5 million in scholarships to women every year. I went, hey, hey, how do I get in on that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I entered a few pageants and won a few and won enough money to continue my education, but also spurred me to be interested and uh, acting, and I ended up going to New York and doing a show in New York, and then I went on tour, and the rest, as they say, is history. With stunts, it's a little bit more complicated because I was an actress way before I did stunts, and that came about because I had gotten stalked after Roadhouse or Point Break, I think, okay. and it was a really scary situation for me, and I thought, gee, Christmas, how am I going to raise a family with you know, with this kind of stuff going on. And the guy ended up call me, calling me at home and he committed suicide on the phone with me because he knew that his phone had been tapped. Oh, my God. Anyway, so it was a long, horrible story. So I was kind of thinking, what do I do? And I had just met and um, started to date a stuntman named Pee Wee Pimonti. And he was like, man, you're such an athlete. Why don't you use stunts? <laughs> are you kidding? You guys are crazy. No. And, and uh, the rule from... Um, Jason Goes to Hell came up, and they wanted somebody that, you know, could do their own fall. Nice. And so I went out and trained, and I went, oh, my gosh, this is so much fun. <laughs> and that's how I got into stunts. Nice. I know I was talking to Adam Marcus. Uh, I interviewed him, and he highly recommended that I reach out to you, and he said you have a Facebook, and that's when I ended up looking for you, and that's how I ended up finding you, through Adam. Awesome. My favorite, Adam Marcus, who carried yep. me through half that film after my feet muddied up from right through the floor so long. Yeah, if he told me uh, that's one of the questions <laughs> i got to ask you, so I actually have that in one of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what was your audition like for Jason Goes to Hell? Um, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't even remember the audition. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I, it must have went well, apparently. <laughs> apparently. That, that's fine, because a lot of people said they don't remember a lot of their auditions, too, because it happened so long ago. Right. So then, uh, what was it like working with Kane Hodder? You know what? I really admire Kane, even to this day, and I hire him, because he's a, he's a really fabulous actor. Um, the, at the time we were shooting... He decided in one of the scenes, which he was not physically, and I was actually running from him, to hide behind the door without telling me. Now, it's at night. We are out in the cabin in the middle of nowhere, and I am not a horror fan. I'm going to make this really clear. <laughs> I am a chicken, chicken, bok bok chicken. I really am. I, I, I can never watch them. They scare me to death. And when this first came up, I was like, no, I don't do horror films. I, I can't even watch them. And, and then when I read the role, it, it was kind of a cool little role. I was like, all right. So <laughs> he hid behind the door. And when they rolled action, he jumped out after me. And he scared me so bad, I physically jumped the car instead of running around it. And that was in the scene, wasn't it? Yeah. Because I remember seeing that, and I, I, I was like, I wonder if she meant to do that. I was actually curious well, about that. No, I, I Starsky and Hutched it, and believe me, in that towel, I was not expecting to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my God. So, speaking about Adam Marcus, how was he as a director? You know what I loved about him is that he was very one-on-one um, -on -one with you. He really... He really um, made me feel comfortable. I wanted to give him everything he wanted. He was really easy to work hard for because he was so passionate about the story. And he, you know, was young and hot off his um, college career coming out with some really great stuff. 
us. And he just, he wanted it bad. And that right. passion is so addicting. And uh, it was probably one of the best experiences I've had with any director um, in my career. Awesome. So, uh, as a stunt woman, you probably did all or most of your stunts. Um, on set, did anything go wrong while filming any of your scenes? Which, obviously, we know about the foot thing, so if you can, like, clarify us about that a little bit, and if anything else went wrong while filming your scenes. Are you talking just on Jason Goes to Hell? Yeah. Um, no. Um, the high fall that I did is actually not really that high, but it was pretty, it was pretty difficult because she had to fall over a railing. Right. And down, down through a uh, tabletop on the bottom. Um, and Jace and uh, Kate actually had a real machete in his hand. Oh. So if I moved too close, he would have gotten me. But him being the consummate professional um, and me being a college gymnast, I pretty well knew that we could do it pretty nicely without too much trouble. Right. Um, the interesting thing is my then boyfriend, now husband, was setting up the, the catcher down below. He was used to setting it for guys his size, not somebody weighed 110 pounds. <laughs> and when I hit it, it was like hitting cement. It aired me out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, but it was fine. It was fun. So how about you tell us a little bit about um, when you were running and you were barefooted, about how that story went down. Um, because there was so much of that, and you, know, you kind of had to see my feet, I think we tried to do a little bit of mole skin, but it was just like, I'm the kind of girl who's just like, well, crap, let's just do it. Well, I, I, I'm not that um, kind of person like, oh, oh, I, I, I'll deal with the injuries later. Let's just let, let's get it done. And I use it as a motivator because the pain made me more nervous or scared, and I think it worked for the character. Right. But then every time I'd stop, Adam would feel so bad that he would pick me up and carry me back to number <laughs> one. And then at some point, I think we actually put like little booties on me so that um, so it wasn't much worse. But it's right. definitely my war wounds. I, I I wear with pride and honor. I agree, especially as part of the job being a stunt woman. It is. It yep. is part of the job. I don't know if you heard. Um, do you, I don't. I don't know if you ever watched The Walking Dead. I know you said you're not much into horror related films or TV series, but uh, in The Walking Dead, there was uh, recently, TMZ posted it, um, The Walking Dead stunt man, he was like 32, he ended up dying doing a stunt for one of the main characters, uh, he was supposed to jump, I think, fall like 12 feet, and he was supposed to land on an airbag or something like that, and uh, he ended up missing it by two inches, and he broke his neck on the cement. Well, let me give you a little data on that, you're, you're almost correct, okay. and yes, I do know about it, because I do sit on the board of SIG after, and I had tried to hire John uh, on our show Nashville okay. not maybe a few months ago. Um, and I, coincidentally, the fall that I did sounds pretty much like the fall he was doing. Wow. Over, and it's over a railing. And the, the, it's really, really, really tricky to do them over railings because the railing holds you up so you, you know, can get into a precarious position. Right. Now, I don't really feel like commenting on it, but I can tell you right now there are no little steps. Right. Start. Exactly. And, um, you you can't ever take anything for granted, and you have to be able to say no if you think it's not going to go well. Right. Definitely. I mean, first and foremost, your life is always the number one. You only get one life. So I mean, if you're afraid to do a stunt, you have to let the let them know. Yeah, I think that that um, the one thing as a stunt performer is you have to figure out the difference between. The bubbles in your stomach that's excitement to do it or the or the inside of your little voice inside your head that says, no, this ain't going to go well. We got to retalk it. One of the things that my husband and I do on our sets is we always, always say it is not only your right, but your responsibility to tell us what you don't like and how we can change it or if it just shouldn't be done, period. End of the story. Our stuff performers have all the say in the world. Awesome. That's very good advice, and that's very good, uh, good on your part because that shows that uh, that you understand how they feel too. They're not just workers; they're also human beings, which is a very good thing to have being an employer. Oh, uh, they're my stars. Definitely. They're not just workers; they are my stars. When they're on Definitely. the set, uh, it, everybody stands back in awe. So they're <laughs> my stars. Awesome. So, uh, what was your most memorable moment while filming Jason Goes to Hell? Uh, but that they stuck a tiny little lady finger gun be 
between my breasts to pull out to shoot him with. And and I think I got cut out because I think I kind of said something like, you think in a minute that this would even hurt him? <laughs> <laughs> I know, after how much Jason went through, I doubt that would kill him. Right, right. So, so instead they had me um, just dive out of the way, which was kind of fun for me as a gymnast. So. Awesome. So obviously you... What? And they called, and they called me Bait. <laughs> bait, is bait ready? <laughs> the thing is, a lot of people thought that your character was going to be the final girl because we saw you right in the beginning. And yeah, granted, you didn't die in the film, but everybody thought you were going to be like throughout the whole film. But you were just the one uh, that actually set up the storyline. Uh, yeah. Hey, I like the way they think. <laughs> I thought it was perfect because it actually, your character was so important because it set up the whole storyline of Jason Goes to Hell. Ultimately, it's the director's decision, yeah. and, you know, we just, we're here to serve him. Agreed. So, obviously, your character survived the wrath of Jason, and we all thought you were either going to die or be the final girl. Point, you know, a lot of people thought you were going to be the final girl, but you were really setting up the storyline, but there was still a possibility that you were going to be the opening kill. So, um, if you were the writer, and you could write an appropriate death scene for your character at the hands of Jason, what would it be? Oh, my gosh, what a great question! <laughs> uh, doing your stunt for that yeah and she goes to the windshield and he catches her in his arms and her head's all just black and she and then he pitches her on the ground and walks away that'd be great that'd be great and you i'll bet you would be more than happy to do your own stunt for that one heck yeah that's awesome (laughs) that would be awesome so uh, what was the best part about filming jason goes to hell and what was the worst <laughs> oh my god so uh, what was the atmosphere and the environment like on set of Jason Goes to Hell um, the atmosphere was very it was always fun I mean we there's so much in this in the film that was so unique to that genre like you know she closed the mirror and and should you know Jason should be right there but he's not it was all right. these great setups that Adam had so wisely put together mm-hmm. and so we were constantly laughing it's like oh he's not there again oh, we'll do again <laughs> so we were laughing and then the one time you do see him he shows up as one of the guys in the clinic and says oh that guy's nothing but a pussy and it was <laughs> him talking about it himself i know that is epic <laughs> that is epic <laughs> And the funny thing is, I remember Adam saying that when I interviewed him about uh, about where all the fake, what they're called, I guess he said they're called quote-unquote red herrings of Jason, and uh, like you you end up, I think you were changing the light bulb, and one time you're in the bathroom, you, when you uh, went to, when you bend over, you get up, you were expecting to see Jason right in the mirror, and the next thing you know, you're taking right. the shower, a typical, you know, a typical, uh, you know, girl scene in a horror film. Awesome, yeah, boobs and bombs. That's what Joel Silver taught me, boobs and bombs. Yep. <laughs> so the, <laughs> the last question I got for you is uh, nothing related to Friday the 13th, um, but I just want to know if you have any projects that you're able to tell the readers about that you can share with us. Yeah, so I'm actually sitting in the parking lot at CBS Bradford right now, getting ready to um, go on a scout for our new show called Seal Team. You'll see me on the pilot. I play uh, Stacy Marshall. And she's a Doctors Without Borders doctor 
person gets kidnapped, and the SEAL team come in to try to rescue her. Rescue her. Awesome. And do you have an air date for that? Yes, CBS, Wednesday night. Uh, I think it's the, I want to say the 27th okay. um, of September. Awesome. That sounds and great. we're just, oh, it's just awesome. Which you guys see this. And by the way, these are the real deal. There's, there's no, um, there's no, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm hiring more real military than I am actually <laughs> even, um, stunt guys. It's just nice. it's so, so wonderful. And they've done such a great job with it. And they have really taken the time to do it right. And these guys that we're working with are just absolutely incredible. You still there? Oh yeah. Okay. Did I, did I, did I you? No, I just I was hearing a static at first. <laughs> That's awesome. I know, uh, like, my book won't be out for a couple years. I'll definitely put it in my book. However, another reason why I'm recording is because I do, like, a five-minute sneak peek to uh, hype up each of the interviews I do. So since uh, since um, it's going to be airing coming up, you know, very soon, I'm going to uh, put that uh, this last question in the sneak peek so whoever listens to it will be able to get wind of the TV series. You rock the world, honey. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving me your time. You gave me a lot to do today. I have, a, I have a, my day off from work full time, but I'm going to be working on my book, and I'm excited to put your interview right into it. Well, God bless you. Good luck to you, and thank you for taking the time to chat with me as well. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye, Will. You All right, too, sir. Thanks. Bye. Bye.